Hello and welcome to this Alent Pro tutorial. My name is Brandon and today I'll be showing you how to run Alent Pro using both console and batch modes. Now these two modes differ quite a bit from the regular GUI that I'm sure most are familiar with as they both operate by taking in commands either interactively in the case of console mode or through a script or executable in the case of batch mode. So with that let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with the interactive console mode and I'll first demonstrate how to start this mode. Just like the regular GUI mode, console mode can have a desktop shortcut option. Using this shortcut is by far the easiest method as all it takes is opening that shortcut and console mode will be activated. We can also run console mode if we're already in our command line interface. From the Alent Pro installation directory, we can either run the Alent Con program from within the bin subdirectory, like so, or we can just start the run Alent Pro Con script. Uh, at the root of the installation uh, directory. Uh, the script will go ahead and start the program in colored mode, which gives us these colored characters and messages. Uh, as you can see, when I ran alien con by itself, I did not include the colored argument, and therefore its text is only white. Now, just because we don't have all those buttons and other interfaces available here in console mode, doesn't mean we can't still use the full functionality of alien Pro. I'll demonstrate this by quickly recreating our Blackjack example project. I'll first navigate to the location of where I want to create my project. And then from here, I can use the workspace.create command to create the Alent Pro workspace. It's good to note here that to get a list of all the available commands, I can simply press tab by itself. So there we can see the workspace command that we just used. Pressing tab with a partially filled command will either autocomplete that command or show you the commands that are available with the current input. So with our workspace created, uh, we need to add a project. And we can see here that there is this project command here. So let's go ahead and add that. Based off the dot within the syntax, we can tell that more commands follow. So let's go ahead and press tab one more time to see what else we can do. And there we can see the final create command, so let's add that. Uh, before actually inputting the command, however, uh, we can go ahead and add the help arguments. This will print to the screen a description of the command as well as the command's proper syntax with a description of available arguments. We can even see an example of it here. Uh, overall, when you're in doubt of what an alien pro console command does or what arguments it takes, just remember the help function. Oh, and if you feel like you need even more information than what's provided here, you can always take a look at the command reference document found within the help pull-down menu of Alien Pro. This document provides an organized list of each console command and provides all that same information we saw previously as well as additional scripting and expected output examples. But in any case, let's get back to our project. Now that we know what the workspace.project.create command actually does, Let's go ahead and use it to continue building our example. Inputting the command will create the project, and then from here, all we need to do is add our files. I'll use the workspace.file.add command. Uh, add the files to the newly created project with the destination argument. And then finally, use the f argument to have Alent Pro read a file list that I've uh, previously included in the directory, which contains a list of all of our HDL files. With the project created, we can now do pretty much anything that was available to us from the GUI mode. I can set the global preferences by using the prefs command, or project properties via the project.prefs command. Uh, we, can we can manipulate the project policy via the project.policy command. Uh, here we can see the command to add as well as configure our policy parameters, among other options. Pretty much any configuration that can be made in GUI mode is also available here. But let's now finish up with interactive console mode by actually running the project and performing some linting. Uh, running the project is as easy as using the project.run command. Just like in the GUI mode, Alien Pro will go through those same five phases. First is parse, uh, elaboration is next, and then synthesization, uh, with constraints being next. And finally, linting. Of course, these five phases can also be ran individually. 
instead of using the project.run command, we can have simply replaced run with the name of the desired phase to be executed. Uh, of course, they must be ran sequentially, however. But in any case, when you have completed all phases of the flow, we can see that we were provided with information uh, from each stage of the flow, such as violations per phase. Uh, we can go ahead and get a full violation report via the project.report.violations command. And this is just going to give us uh, that same information that was available from the violation viewer in the GUI mode. And that's really all there is to interactive console mode. I'll now show you batch mode in which we simply need to run a single command or script to use the full functionality of Alimpro. There are two methods to running batch mode that I'll show in this video, and that's running that same alintcon command uh, used earlier with the batch and do arguments. The input required here is simply a file or a path to a file that will hold all the commands to be executed. Additionally, I could have passed a string of commands rather than a script, but uh, for now, we'll just go ahead and use this runme file here. You can see I've also added that colored argument just to make the output that we're about to see a bit better looking. Once we enter this single command, the script will get ran and execute each command within. This is great for automating processes, as I'll show when I go over the script, but we can see each command gets printed to the screen uh, when executing, and the same additional information here after certain commands is still available. So with the script complete, let's now go ahead and go over some of the new commands within it. Here, we can see the project being ran in parts, as mentioned earlier. And between some phases, we were able to generate and report some phase-specific information, such as the hierarchy here. We can also see an example of rule configuration here. I've changed these rules to look for singles and ports using capital case names, as well as underscores, via the rule's regular expression. And I was even able to change multiple parameters of a single rule within a single command here. Finally, we can see references to a few reports that were generated here as well. Uh, we saw this regular violation report that, we, uh, that was printed to console, but we can see that these other reports were generated and saved to our workspace. All those reports available from the GUI mode are also available to be generated here. Now let's finally go over the last batch mode for this video. We can once again run all of Alimp Pro using a single command, and this time without even using a script to specify operation mode, via the Alimp batch program from the bin directory. All we have to do here is input the files to be linted, which I'll do using that list once again. Uh, the design entry and linting preferences via an optional script. The project settings are already set up here, so we'll skip this for now and just use our already created project. And then finally, the mode of execution. We can specify if we want to parse using the uh, parse underscore only argument, or we can specify uh, which phase to be linted using the name of the desired phase followed by underscore lint. Or we can simply leave it a uh, blank to have a lint batch run the full linting process, uh, which we'll do now. And you may have saw, I also added that uh, cleanup argument, and that will just go ahead and delete any automatically generated intermediate files after the linting process is completed. And there we have it. Based off this command alone, uh, we were able to run the full flow of Alimp Pro on this project, and we can even see that a few reports were generated, including uh, all that violation information. Of course, report generation can be modified to include different formats, uh, this just requires adding or modifying those arguments to the Alimp batch program. And that'll be it on this introduction to Alimp Pro's console modes. Uh, be sure to check them out if you're looking to get away from the GUI or simply want to automate your linting process. And of course, thanks for watching.